what I have here is a spatchcock or butterfly chicken. Um, if you look at my previous stuff, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michelle Pam of Non Non Paleo. And um, my previous scope, I showed how to remove the backbone in a chicken, which is the way I like to roast my chicken all the time. And I salt it and I dry brine it. And you can actually keep this in your fridge loosely covered um, with some plastic wrap for up to three days. So this I actually did yesterday because Henry, who's like hiding behind the corner, and I are working on a new blog post because after I showed this on Periscope, a lot of people were like, oh, I don't really know how to do this. Can you do a step-by-step -step recipe on your blog? So I said, sure, because this is how I make my chicken all the time. And so this chicken has already had the backbone removed. Here, I'll show you guys right here. And I've already loosened the skin in between, um, you know, the chicken and the skin. And I've applied salt all over and under the skin. And this has been hanging out for 24 hours in the fridge, loosely covered with plastic wrap. And so now I'm gonna put a flavored butter under the skin. And this just, um, you know, flavors it and gives it, you know, makes it really tasty. So I'm actually gonna ask Henry, Henry, can you help me open this? My hands are all chickeny. Um, and so basically what I have here is I have a quarter cup of butter. If you guys don't do butter, you can do ghee, you can do softened, any type of fat you like. You can even use olive oil, whatever. So I, 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 I like butter. So I have a quarter cup of softened butter in here. Salt before, after the 24 hours. Salt before, because you want it to, that's the whole, that's the whole purpose of um, dry brining it, is you want, um, you want the salt to make it, to do its thing and make it super flavorful. And it actually makes your chicken juicier. It doesn't make it drier. Um, and so you can, so you don't even have to butterfly it, but the salting part is really important. Um, and I learned this from Judy Rogers of Zuni Cafe and she um, was super well known for salting all of her meats ahead of time, especially her famous chicken and bread salad at Zuni Cafe. And she would always, salt it up to three days in advance. And it helps preserve it, it makes it tastier, it makes it juicier. So you don't have to butterfly it, but you should definitely salt it ahead of time. Oh look, and <laughs> Owen got a new haircut. <laughs> but, and before it was all in his face, but now he has this new kind of hipster haircut like his father. So anyway, so I, what I have here is I have um, the softened butter. So if you were to do this on a weekday, so you could totally butterfly it and salt it up to three days in advance and so it'll be ready for you whenever you want to cook but I always like to put a flavored butter right before I roast it so I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees convection roast if you don't have a convection oven you can just do 425 or 400 um, in terms of the total cooking time it takes about 45 minutes um, but that all depends on the size of your chicken like I was cooking a three and a half pound chicken the other day and it only took like 30 minutes and so you really do need to check the temperature of your chicken. And so you gotta stab it in the um, thickest part of the breast and that should be about 150. I know a lot of books say 160, 165, but 150 is perfect. In fact, when I sous vide it, I do 140 and it's just fine. So if the breast is 150, it's almost guaranteed that the thighs will be 165, which is perfect. Um, and the reason why butterflying it is so great is because the breast meat, which has a tendency to overcook, is almost kind of um, insulated um, because it's in the middle. Um, and so it'll be perfectly fine. So here I am with my herb butter again. Henry, can you, I'm sorry, um, can you help me pop the top off? <laughs> my hands are chickeny. So this is Henry. He has a camera because we're gonna take pictures of this for the vlog. Can you help me pour out a tablespoon? So what I do is I do about a quarter cup of... Um, you want me to just pour it out here? Yeah, just pour it into this here. Thank you, yes. And so what I have here is um, one, like just a random seasoning blend from Penzi's. This one's actually called pasta sprinkle, but I don't eat pasta. But it, it's, um, it's basically just a dried herb blend. It has basil, oregano, thyme, and garlic, which I think tastes great um, in chicken. So I'm gonna just, um, sorry, see this is how it works. Normally I cook and then Henry takes a picture and I'm supposed to freeze. Okay. All right, see, see that's how it works. That's how, <laughs> and everything we make, we actually eat. 
And so my one tip about what type of herbs to put under, you know, to make your herb butter, it can be whatever. You can make, you can use fresh herbs, because in my cookbook, uh, Nom Nom Paleo Food for Humans, we have a Peruvian chicken where we use fresh herbs, um, you know, but in this case, I just use my favorite dry herb blend. I normally use a salt-free blend because um, I already have salted the whole thing. But if you don't have time and I've done this before, I will, um, you know, salt a little bit. Like I probably don't go as as hard under or as much under the skin as I normally do. And then I'll use a flavored seasoning um, blend that has salt, and then I will mix that with the butter. Um, and can't oh <laughs> can't wait to hear your next podcast. It's funny you should say that. We just recorded a podcast yesterday, right, Henry? We did. Yay! And um, this one we talk about. Our favorite crushes of the week, um, which because it's already fall, we talk about our favorite fall uh, produce, and then the 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 main course of the podcast is about my time at Camp Nerd Fitness, which was a lot of fun, and then we talk about our crushes of the week, and we talk about all this TV we like to watch, um, and we also answer a question about uh, feeding your preschooler. Or what you do, what to do if your kid goes to a non-paleo preschool? Do you make a fuss or you don't? And we, we talk about what we do. So, as I said before, this is a quarter cup of butter with about a tablespoon of dried um, herbs and spices. And so, a quarter cup is four tablespoons. Oh, where is the podcast? The podcast is on iTunes, Stitcher. Just look up Nom Nom Paleo. Um, uh, wherever you listen to your podcast and we have 15 that you can listen to and we're working on 16. I plan to spatch a turkey next Saturday. You totally should. In fact, my Thanksgiving guide that I uh, emailed to all of my newsletter subscribers describes how to make a butterfly a turkey. In fact, the reason why we're doing this post on how to butterfly a chicken is so People who aren't sure how to do it and they, they just want to kind of do a practice run, uh, this chicken is the perfect way to do it. So because, as I said before, this is a quarter cup or four tablespoons, like I, I grab about like a fourth of it and I put one um, under the skin and on one boob. I wonder if you guys, can you guys see that? Here, maybe if I do it like this you can see it better. And then I put another tablespoon and the butter should be really soft. You see how it's like really soft? I literally will leave this out. Like, if I'm doing this um, for a weeknight dinner, I will take it out in the morning and leave it out all day, the butter, um, because I don't think there's any problems with that. So this, I'm going to put another, like, tablespoon. See, there's Henry trying to take a picture. Um, and so if you look at the blog, we literally do. Like, I'm just cooking, and normally Henry's telling me to freeze more, but because we're on Periscope, he's not telling me to freeze just <laughs> And then this one, I stick on top of this thigh. So basically you divide the flavored butter into fourths. And you just, so once you put a blob under the skin, then you can work it, you can just push on the skin to kind of move it all the way down. Do you get that, Henry? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, we may have to do this again with another chicken so you can get better pictures. So look, the, if you have nice soft butter, you can hold the skin down and push down and the herb butter goes all the way down. You see that? So here, you can, I don't know if you can see it really well, but you can see that the herb butter goes all the way down the chicken breast. And so I have some on the leg and then I actually try to push that down to the drumstick as well. And if you look at my previous Periscope, and I'll also describe it in my um, blog post about how I do this, I loosen the skin everywhere on the chicken. I you loosen it. drumstick over again. Okay, here, sorry. Um, so I'll answer some questions. That's going to be amazing. Any herbs? Yes, yeah, so I, the one I used here, it changes every time, and I'll talk about that when I post it in my blog post, but it's really whatever I have. Um, and normally I don't have fresh herbs to make kind of weeknight chicken. And so this one I have is a no salt blend from Penzi's called Pasta Sprinkle. Um, and I don't, I don't eat pasta, but I like that this blend has like basil, oregano, thyme, and garlic. 
which I think is just a perfect blend for chicken. Guess what? The stainless steel cooling rack you recommend. That is what I have right here. Best thing ever. And so I think this is all set up. So now that the butter is underneath the skin and I've kind of worked it everywhere, I'm gonna rearrange it to have it ready for the oven. I kind of pull the skin so that it covers every part because as I told you guys before, I loosened it everywhere. So now I just have to make sure that it goes back in place. I like when there's extra skin. Can you guys see? I'm gonna put this right here. I like when there's extra skin at the top of it. Do you see that? Because then I can fold it over and then I tuck the wing to keep it in place. And that's it. I'm gonna pop this in the oven now. 400 degrees, convection roast, you can do 425 regular. It'll be about 45 minutes, but I'm gonna check the temperature. I'm not just gonna go by time. Um, I do 20 minutes and then I flip, sorry, I'm gonna try it in here. I'm gonna, and then I just flip it around in the oven halfway through. So I go like 20 minutes and then I add another 20 minutes and then I start checking the temperature when it's about, so this is a four and a half pound bird. So I know for sure this takes about 40, 45 minutes, but if I had a three pound chicken, which a lot of the pastured birds are smaller, that might be three, 30 minutes. And so I, you know, stab it in the thickest part of the breast. And if it's 150, then I know that it's done. Um, I do have a previous scope about cleaning the rack. Um, I will link to that when I put this up too, but I think in all my other posts, I've, oh, in my lemongrass chicken posts that I just put on my blog, Nom Nom Paleo, I do link to my Periscope on how I clean this rack. Um, and it's really easy, um, and that's what you guys should do. So this is ready to be popped in the oven. We're gonna have it for lunch, and then hopefully there will be enough light so that we can um, take pictures for a blog post later this week. Um, and that's about it. My hands are super chickeny. I want to wash them and then I'll answer some quick questions you guys have. If you have questions about, you know, Thanksgiving prep, um, I'll stay on for a minute or so. You want me to pop this in the oven? Yeah, you can pop that in the oven. Yeah. All right. Let me. So, do you guys have any quick cooking questions? Any Thanksgiving questions? Your kitchen is beautiful. Oh, thank you. We've hidden all the mess, like on the ground, that you guys can't see. Do you season the skin? Yes, I put salt on the skin. I don't like to put, I used to put a bunch of other stuff on the skin, but it burns. So, I just put salt. And sometimes I'll brush a little bit of um, fat on the top, but I found that it doesn't make a huge difference. Hi Michelle, this is my first time joining Scopes. Have your app, it is great, thank you. We actually are working on our iPhone version of the app and that should be out later this year. If you already have the iPad app, the iPhone version is free because um, it'll be a universal app. Um, and I missed those questions that just came up at the bottom. So if you guys have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. I just made some magic mushroom powder, best seasoning in the world, you can totally use that. Um, with in an herb butter, but then I wouldn't use as much salt under the skin. So if you're like if you're pressed for time and you cannot like dry brine it ahead of time, just you know salt the top and then make an herb butter with the magic mushroom powder, and and that will be perfect because the magic mushroom powder, use it like a seasoning salt and use it as a salt replacement as opposed to just like a dry rub. I'm wondering why I have to turn the chicken. Well, I I. I don't actually flip the chicken, I just turn the rack and it's because my oven, like most ovens, is not perfectly even. So I just flip it 180 degrees to make sure that it cooks evenly. All right, I think that is, oh, I tried magic mushroom powder but couldn't get it pretty powdery enough. So that is why you need a um, either a high powered blender or a cheap coffee grinder works really well. I have like a 20, $20 coffee grinder that I almost use exclusively for magic mushroom powder and it totally pulverizes it. Another um, issue is that your mushrooms may be too big or your mushrooms may be a little too like soggy um, because they are dried and if you live in a humid environment it won't pulverize. Um, same process for turkey. I do do the same process for turkey. In fact, if you go to my site, nomnompaleo.com, I have a butterfly big bird recipe, and it's also in the ebook that I send to all of my newsletter subscribers. And 
I think it's the perfect way to make turkey. The only issue is you really can't go above a 12 pound turkey, at least I can't, because I don't have a giant oven. Um, but otherwise, it is the best way to make turkey and it'll be done in about 90 minutes. Okay, that's it. I hope you guys have a great Sunday. I hope this was helpful. I will put this all up on the blog. Um, there is a version of it in my cookbook, my Peruvian chicken recipe. Um, but this is going to be a super, oh, can I subscribe now and get the newsletter? Yes. If you go to my site and subscribe on the thank you page, there's a link to the free Thanksgiving ebook along with a 50 okay, page cool. preview uh, of my cookbook. Anyway, that's it. Um, you know, there's a lot of commotion happening in the background. I hope you guys have a great day. Adios people. Bye.